Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. Also, if you want to follow TPM on Twitter, you can at TPM Videos. One thing that's always set Disney apart from other theme parks has been its use of audio animatronics. It's that extra bit of Disney magic that really brings your theme park experience to the next level. Hey, I'm on a roll now. Audio animatronics have been used by the Walt Disney Company since 1961, and to this day are seen all over the Disney parks. But since about 2005, the Disney parks have been looking for ways to enhance the guest experience through animatronics. So in the mid-2000s, they started something called the Disney Living Character Initiative. This initiative by Disney was to bring new levels of guest interactions while bringing characters to life like never before. One early initiative was the introduction of the articulated characters, but not all initiatives were lucky enough to stick around. Very nice! <laughs> a lot of the impressive animatronic attractions created by Walt Disney Imagineering, whether for the Living Character Initiative or not, have quietly disappeared from the Disney parks and no longer exist. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 5 extinct Disney animatronic attractions. Number 5. Lucky the Dinosaur 2003 marked the year that Disney debuted its very first free-roving audio animatronic. Lucky the Dinosaur. Standing at 8 feet tall, this Segnosaurus animatronic character was very lifelike and was the first official character built in response to Disney's Living Character Initiative. He could walk on his own, move his head, blink his eyes, respond to guests, and even sign autographs. He made his first appearance at the National History Museum of Los Angeles on August 28, 2003. A few days later, he made his way over to Disney California Adventure, but since he was still in the prototype testing phase, he returned to Walt Disney Imagineering and didn't make his official Disney Park debut until 2005. You know what? Uh, we've been trying all kinds of things. In June 2005, Lucky the Dinosaur appeared at Walt Disney World in Dinoland USA at Animal Kingdom, along with his handler, Dr. Woodson. Lucky, this is cool. He says he's very pleased to meet you, Cole. Now you might be wondering why he was pushing a flower cart. Well, I guess you could say the flower cart was pushing him. See, the figure needed to be lightweight so he could walk. But he also needed power to run. So the flower cart was used to conceal the batteries and computers that provided power to Lucky the Dinosaur. <laughs> After his brief summer stint at Animal Kingdom, he was then moved to celebrate the opening of Hong Kong Disneyland in September of 2005. Now since he was only a prototype, he wasn't very reliable. It was said that during his time in the parks, he was constantly missing multiple appearances each day because he kept breaking down. So Lucky the Dinosaur goes down in history and joins the other dinosaurs that are now extinct. But he has made a few other appearances outside of the Disney parks. He now has a new permanent home at Walt Disney Imagineering in Glendale, California. I think we got rid of him, right? No, we didn't. It's okay. Number 4. Chef Remy. In 2008, also as a part of Disney's Living Character Initiative, Bon Appetit from Chef Remy premiered as an addition to the dining experience at Restaurant des Stars in the Walt Disney Studios Park at the Disneyland Paris Resort. Later in 2009, it would also make its premiere at the Les Chefs de France restaurant in the France Pavilion at Epcot. Six days a week with four appearances a day, a maitre d' would greet diners of the restaurant with a rolling gourmet food cart. They'd lift the lid, like they normally do in France, from a silver dome cheese platter when the maitre d' reveals a six inch tall animatronic rat. Chef Remy from the animated film Ratatouille then comes to life, entertaining diners with animated movements and quiet little squeaks. Now those aren't your chicken strips. Those are for her. It's probably the only rat you'd be okay with seeing in a restaurant. To date, Chef Remy is the smallest audio animatronic created by Walt Disney Imagineering and is the only living character initiative animatronic to get two separate figures made. It does a very good job at entertaining diners and bringing this small little animated character to life. Now you might be wondering exactly how this figure works. Well, if you look closely at this video, 
You can see that the black handle of the silver dome has a small joystick on top of it, and what looks to be a trigger at the bottom. It's likely that this gives the maitre d' full control of the figure. Even while this cast member sings, pay attention to her hand gripping the handle in relation to Remy's movement. The animatronic figure was definitely a success and lasted at Epcot for four years until it became extinct in October 2013 and for five years until June 2014 at Disneyland Paris. With the addition of the new Ratatouille ride coming to the France Pavilion at Epcot, it would be a great opportunity to bring this animatronic back to Epcot at some point in the future. Wouldn't you say so? <laughs> Bye. Bye. Number 3. Push the Talking Trash Can Although not part of the Disney Living Character Initiative, Push the Talking Trash Can made its official debut in 1995 at the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. Created and designed by Daniel Deutsch, Push was a radio-controlled robot that made daily appearances in Tomorrowland. Now he was an actual trash can. If you pushed the flap, you could look inside to see a trash bag, but he also moved around freely and interacted with guests. He was actually quite the character. It's okay, people. She's not stealing me. When interacting with Push, it was really easy to forget that it was being operated by an actual person. And the technology of this figure is actually quite simple. So the figure was controlled by a cast member on stage with Push who appeared in disguise. And by disguise, we mean wearing normal clothes to blend in as a guest. The cast member had a transmitter hidden in their bag and had a microphone in their hand. When they spoke into the microphone, it changed their voice and allowed them to interact with guests nearby. Push became a staple of Tomorrowland at Magic Kingdom and was loved by fans. So much so that when Disney announced they would be saying goodbye to Push, fans reacted on social media with Facebook groups and hashtags, trying to keep this character in the park. According to Daniel Deutsch in a New York Daily News article, there was some ambiguity to the verbiage as to what they owned and what I owned, that being between Disney and Real Simple Ideas, the company that owned Push. When Push comes to shove, Ultimately, he was canned from Magic Kingdom in February of 2014, making him extinct. <laughs> Number 2. The Luxo Jr. Dancing Lamp The Pixar Place area at Disney's Hollywood Studios opened in 2008. A small addition was made to the area in June of 2009 when Disney debuted their newest animatronic, which was a 6-foot-tall Pixar Luxo Jr. animatronic lamp. You were able to see this animatronic up close on the wall across from Toy Story Midway Mania, approximately every 15 minutes for a mini show. Luxo was a very impressive figure, but it did face many mechanical issues that caused it to constantly go down. Now at the time, most Disney audio animatronics ran on pneumatics or hydraulics, but Luxo Jr. was a bit different and was a prototype of a fully electric figure. Around the time Luxo Jr. appeared at the park in 2009, the Norwegian company Luxo Lamps accused Disney and Pixar of infringing their copyright by using the Luxo name on the limited edition of Blu-ray that came with a mini Luxo figure. Up until this point, Pixar and Disney had never used the Luxo name on their products. The name issue was brought before a judge where documents also mentioned the Luxo Jr. animatronic at Walt Disney World. Luxo Jr. was removed from the park in April of 2010, with Disney saying that it will no longer perform since it was a test figure with a limited run. Seeing where this figure was built and placed doesn't seem like a location for a limited run type figure, so its removal was probably more of a case of mechanical and legal issues, but we'll never know for sure. When you visit Pixar Place today, the lighting sign over the door and Luxo's platform are reminders of the impressive audio animatronic that once performed at Hollywood Studios. Also, the Pixar Place pathway is going to become a backstage area once Toy Story Land at Disney's Hollywood Studios opens in summer of 2018. So it probably would have been lights out anyway, even if he was still around.
Number 1. Wally. -E. If you were lucky enough to be in the right place in 2008, you would have experienced a very impressive Wally -E animatronic. Based on the title character of the 2008 Disney Pixar film, Wally -E was created by Walt Disney Imagineering and was used for promotional events for the film's release, with the plan to eventually transfer to Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Like the other figures created for the Living Character Initiative, Wally -E is fully interactive and can roll on his tread feet, tilt his head, move his arms and hands, all while it responded to guests through electronic sounds made vaguely to resemble speech. It really brought the character from the animated film to life. The magic of Disney Animation meet and greet at Hollywood Studios and an area at Disney California Adventure were actually set up to house the planned Wally -E experience in the summer of 2008, but it was never carried out. Aside from a cardboard cutout that was used as a placeholder for the Wally -E figure, it was an extinct animatronic in the parks right from the start. So the figure stands about three and a half to four feet tall and is said to weigh approximately 700 pounds. Word on the street is that Disney was concerned about the figure's weight and size and became worried that it could easily run over guests' feet, causing harm. So yeah, the animatronic never made it into the park, but it has made brief appearances at the D23 Expo in the past. There's also accounts saying that the Wally -E animatronic figure was actually testing backstage at Walt Disney World in 2008. <laughs> but, surprise surprise, kept breaking down. Probably a similar situation of when Wally -E broke down at a D23 meet and greet. So along with the character's size, the unreliability was probably another major factor of why it was never seen in the park. So, have you ever had a chance to experience any of these figures firsthand? And if you could bring back one of these characters, which one would it be? Leave a comment down below and start a conversation. If you have any videos from the Disney parks that you'd like to share with us to be used in future videos, follow the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching! Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel, and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like.